Hey guys, LD Silver here, and as we all know, Sea of Thieves just recently released sea forts into the game. I know there are a lot of questions that you guys have surrounding these new forts in terms of how long do they take to complete? How much gold do you get from them? What's the fastest way to complete them and unload the loot? Or are they even worth the time and the effort? I have the answers to all your questions, plus a few bonus tips and much more in this month's tips and tricks video, Sea Forts. All right, before we continue guys don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified whenever these new videos are first released with the launch of season six see if these release sea forts into the game i've done a lot of testing and sciencing with these and i've also come across several other youtube videos that have clickbait in their titles such as insane, insane gold, gold and 250k, 250K gold, gold per, per hour, hour using my, my methods method. They're lying to you. I followed their methods and came nowhere near the amount of gold or completion time they claim to have made. And I'm here to show you the most time effective and efficient way to complete these new forts and make a good chunk of change in a short amount of time. Okay, so to be the most effective and efficient with this, you're gonna wanna start out at Plunder Outpost. Plunder Outpost is located at the very southern end of the map in the Ancient Isles and also northwest of Thieves Haven. Now, the reason why I say to start out at Plunder Outpost is that it's located extremely close to the Sea Fort Old Brinestone Fortress. And just a few squares northwest of Old Brinestone is Ancient Gold Fortress. These two Sea Forts are the closest to one another than any of the other four Sea Forts on the map. And after you complete one of them, sell to the other and complete that the first one has already respawned it's just a rinse and repeat now in those youtube videos i was telling you about they try to tell you to take a clockwise route around the map hitting up all six sea forts i highly advise against this for several reasons number one traveling around the map is going to make you more visible to other ships and more likely to be spotted and attacked staying in the very south to southwestish part of the map keeps you isolated and you have a higher chance of going unnoticed by other players on the server for the majority of the farm. And number two is that the other sea forts are so spread apart from one another that you're spending most of your time sailing when you could be knocking out a couple of extra forts. In those other videos, they stated that they completed six sea forts over the course of two hours by going around the map. During my time trial, I completed eight sea forts in one hour and 50 minutes by bouncing back and forth between old brinestone and ancient gold fortress now you notice that i parked in front of the water gate at this fort that's the first strat parking here gives you a direct line of sight with the harpoon to the loot from the main treasury and also to the loot from the bonus storage room up at the top of the fort you also can see that i grabbed the collector's chest from the pathway and i'm going to take it and place it outside of the door of the treasury I'll use this to transport all the skulls and trinkets to save on travel time. Now I'll fast forward throughout the video in various spots, but I wanted to show you guys how I complete this fort. So here we see what my starting gold is before this gold pouch gets deposited. I was sitting at 868,309 gold when I started this time trial. Okay, now we found the storeroom key. So what I'm going to do next is take that key and unlock the storeroom at the top of the fort and start to unload the treasure in it and set it up for the harpoon in the end. Remember, it's all about efficiency. So completing all the steps while simultaneously killing the waves of phantom guards is how you minimize the amount of time spent at these forts. 
in some of those other videos they try to tell you that the most effective way to unload the loot is by dropping it through the trap doors on each level although this is a cool feature in the game it's not the most effective way as it adds a lot of travel time versus just putting the loot on the ledge and harpooning it I have a routine that I follow whenever I do these sea forts. My first priority is finding the storeroom key for that bonus loot. But while I'm looking for this key, I'm collecting any other loot that I find along the way in cupboards or in chests. I'm moving the collector's chest into position. I'm lowering the water gate to get ready for the harpooning of the loot later. I'm basically multitasking and completing as many things that I can simultaneously so that I can get in, get out, and move on to the next fort. Once I know that the phantom boss wave is coming soon, I'll set up a keg or two at the top of the stairs to try to bottleneck him into a quick kill. Another thing to know is that you'll see me use a pistol 99% of the time as all the phantoms are one shot to it. If you don't get hit regged. typically move this keg out of the way so that in case it does blow up from the keg at the top of the stairs it doesn't push my boat away from its position now that the phantom boss is spawned i run to the top and i wait for him to pass the bottleneck so that i can blow up the keg and kill him easier since he takes five or more pistol shots to kill it's that easy Now comes the unloading of the treasury. Keep in mind, guys, that I do stream live on Twitch here. So if you ever want to stop on by and say hello, feel free to do so. Speaking of streaming, when I streamed one of these forts, I had a viewer ask me why I wasn't using the pulley platform when unloading the loot from the treasury. The answer to that is very simple. If you position your boat correctly, You'll be able to harpoon the loot from the treasury directly out of the water. And then all you have to do is point your harpoon up and you'll be able to harpoon the loot from the storage room at the top of the fort. Using the pulley is once again, a cool feature in the game, but it's not the best method for maximizing your time efficiency when doing these forts. Now I'll show you a trick with the harpoon. Have you ever noticed that sometimes when you take loot off of the harpoon that you can either drop it on top of the harpoon or even pick it right back up after dropping it on the deck while trying to interact with the harpoon again? There's an easy counter to this. Harpoon the loot and simply grab the loot from the harpoon, jump and rotate your camera to the side, drop the loot and hit your interact button again. You'll grab the harpoon every single time and never have to worry about re-grabbing the loot off the deck of your ship again. Remember, this video is all about efficiency. It sounds like it's a lot to take in, but when you get the hang of it, it comes natural. Now we grab the loot from the top of the fort and we're ready to move on to the next fort. When approaching these sea forts, I always approach at an angle that lines up with the corner of the fort. There isn't a single cannon that covers the corners of the forts. I know you're probably saying right now, but LD, these phantoms can't hit a goddamn. And for right now, that's true. But I have a very strong feeling that adjustments are going to be made to the aim of the phantoms in a future patch. So it's good to already be in the habit of approaching with caution in mind. Okay, I've completed four of these forts now, and it's time to raise the Reaper Emissary. Oh, look, there's another Reaper on the server. Squirrel! But I have to remember that I'm going for speed on this run, so I need to remain focused and not get distracted. I raised my Reaper Emissary after completing four sea forts because at the time, I didn't know if it was going to take three or four completions to raise my Emissary from grade one to grade five. I can now tell you that it only takes three fort completions to hit grade five as a Reaper Emissary. This is very important knowledge to have so that you can remain undetected on the map for as long as possible. Because remember, once you throw up your Reaper Emissary, the entire server can see your location. 
So keep that in mind for whenever you're wanting to time your turn-ins. Another good thing about staying between these two forts that I suggested is that you're very close to Reaper's hideout for a quick turn-in already. After I hit grade five and was on my way to Reaper's hideout, I did get attacked by another ship. It'd been shadowing me since I was grade three and I kept an eye out for him, but I quickly dispatched them and moved on. Like most ships that attack Reapers, they didn't have any loot and were just a minor thorn in my side. The crap out my server. I'm trying to make a YouTube video, you nerds. I found a harpoon robo at Fool's Lagoon and transferred all the loot to it on my way to Reaper's hideout. Having this much loot to turn in as a solo player is very dangerous and time consuming. So having a harpoon robo comes in clutch for fast turn ins. I park on the west side of Reaper's hideout because it has the most visibility to see any incoming ships and it also has several escape routes should I need to take off. I use the harpoon rowboat to pull all of the loot into the main chamber. Now, once I make it into the main chamber, I use blunder bombs to destroy the rowboat. The reason I do this is because in the past, I've had the rowboat actually glitch out on me and despawn and all of the loot that was in the rowboat glitched under the map. When I would step back to the entrance of the main chamber, I could see the glint in the loot, but I wasn't able to pick any of it up and it was lost forever. So now I don't take any chances at all. Once I destroy the rowboat, I start handing in the loot while I wait for it to despawn. Now that we have all the loot turned in, I'm just waiting for the final tally of the gold to finish. So let me go ahead and hit this fast forward button one more time. Okay, we are done. All loot has been turned in, the emissary flag has been lowered, and the gold has been tallied. Let's see what we end up with. So we finished at a total of 1,262,831 gold. Now, that's not how much we made. Remember, we had a starting point at the beginning of the video, which was 868,309 gold. So let's do some quick math. We have 1,262,831 gold minus 868,309 gold equals 394,522 gold. as a grade five reaper. Now we're gonna dive deep into the mathematics and do what I haven't seen anyone else do in their videos before. And that's completely dissect the speed run based off of all possible bonus turn in multipliers to show just how much gold that you can make off of this at the right time. Have a seat class. Okay, so our total time was one hour and 50 minutes. We completed eight fortresses in that time. Next is the base value. Our base value is how much we would have made if we turned in without any type of emissary grade or any other bonus multiplier. And that number is 157,809 gold total, which translates to 86,078 gold per hour. That's not too bad. Now turning in as a grade five Reaper, which is a two and a half times multiplier of the base value. And that number is 394,522 gold or 215,194 gold per hour. Next best thing is turning in as a grade five Reaper during gold rush. This is an additional one and a half times multiplier added onto the two and a half multiplier from being grade five Reaper. And that comes out to a total of 631,236 gold or 344,311 gold per hour. Now it's looking a lot better. And finally, the best possible scenario for this, and that's turning in as a grade five Reaper during gold rush while the gold and glory event is active. That's a two and a half times multiplier from the grade five Reaper 
a one and a half time multiplier from gold rush and then an additional two time multiplier from golden glory that gives us a total of 946,854 gold which is 516,466 gold an hour that's over half a million gold an hour now that is insane, insane gold, gold. Class dismissed.